what's the issue? It just didn't make sense. Like, I was expected to have the service continue on when now that I'm a civilian and I was just getting paperwork and talk and counseling about how I should conduct myself now that I'm a civilian. And, um, and that's kind of where it, it ended. So from 2005 until 2006, I was dealing with a disability claim where they were sending me letters saying that we're still working on my disability claim, we're still working on my disability claim. And I was a full-time student. I wasn't able to work because of my back injury. I did find a part-time weekend job where I found out that uh, it was much harder to deal with a civilian job now than it was before. Um, I had adjustment issues. I needed to see a psychiatrist. I needed to get some kind of counseling to figure out what's going on with me. Because at the time, I didn't think PTSD was an issue. So they uh, informed me that I did have two years worth of free medical service. But with the way things were going, with the way uh, the appointment setting was going and the amount of time I was actually seeing someone wasn't really working out. The ratio was like 30 minutes to an hour of seeing somebody, but the appointments would be set up for like a month or two months later. And because I was a full-time student, um, it was even worse because then I would have to reschedule if I missed the appointment. If I missed the appointment in 30 minutes, the doctor would no longer be available and I'd have to reschedule, so that meant another two months. So two years worth of medical service is nothing. It just doesn't work out. And um, I then realized that adjusting to civilian life was going to be much more challenging. And it's because I was a full-time student that um, it didn't really dawn on me until I got my AA degree. And I was, again, optimistic about uh, trying to reach into higher goals and move on into my new chapter of my life. And again, I was still dealing with the VA healthcare system, which was more of a roadblock than anything else. Um, I graduated. I figured that I should go back to my hometown. I'm originally from Hawaii. So I went back to Hawaii. I saw some family there. I didn't really speak about my situation. It was very uncomfortable for me to disclose uh, my military experience or my situation with my family. Um, came back and four t 14 days later realized that finding a job was much harder than expected. And most of the jobs I found weren't going to pay enough. And I did leave the military with $17,000 saved, good credit. I was a good Marine. And I served honorably. I never questioned anything about the integrity of my service, my service to country, and the services that I was receiving until I wa went into the VA healthcare system. And it was then that some things were just not working out for me. I heard about Iraq Veterans Against the War through a friend of mine, Jeff Key, who also served alongside of me. He's also from 4th Line Armored Reconnaissance. Um, we touched bases when uh, I was already in this situation where I don't think I was going to be able to help myself. So the $17,000 that I saved went to zero. Expenses built to such an extent that they were overwhelming and I couldn't pay it anymore. I was having adjustment issues with jobs. Jobs weren't paying enough. My credit score went very low. It's now at fair. And, um, and I was again finding myself in a very bad situation. And I couldn't believe that this is exactly how Vietnam veterans must have felt when they came back home. Uh, Jeff Key lived in Hollywood at the time. I gave him a call. He wasn't home. But he did have somebody that was house-sitting for him. So he told me if I go over to his place, I'd be able to stay there. So this was considered couch surfing, which at the time, I wasn't even thinking that I was homeless. Um, so I stayed at his place. But it wasn't immediate, because the person that was house-sitting wasn't there all the time. So I ended up sleeping in my car for one day. I was in Hollywood. I decided to uh, walk around, see if I could find some jobs. And I reached this corner. I uh, can't remember the name of the block, but there was a food wagon that was serving free food to homeless people. And I decided to take that opportunity to eat some free food. And I, at, at first, I was thinking, I'm just hungry, and this is free food, and I'm going to go for it. 
So I stand in line and um, interesting enough, there was another social organization there with a video camera that was documenting homelessness and it was Friends Helping Friends organization. And as I stand there watching everybody else around me and watching the people of Friends Helping Friends document the homeless people, I looked at myself and I started thinking to myself that I'm now an Iraq war vet. I'm standing in a line of, with homeless people being served free food and this is actually happening to me. This is actually happening to our Iraq era war vets and that I'm one of them and I'm a casualty of that system. And at that moment in time, the reality hit and it hit so hard that suicidal thoughts began. I broke down several times. I uh, literally cracked uh, the day after that and I was I, once I even once I was able to get back to Jeff's place I had told him many times about ending my life because this is not exactly how I wanted it to be I lost dignity self-respect my honor just went down and I was in a very dark place for a considerable amount of time I had a relationship with uh, a girl that eventually went away as well um, she couldn't understand the situation I was in, so um, I ended that relationship. And again, that was another swift blow to me. And uh, this, the school situation never picked up. I ended up having to find a job that barely paid anything. And it was with Jeff that I actually found a way to pick myself back up again. It was counseling through him that I found my way back in life and he introduced me to Iraq Veterans Against the War and it was throughout Iraq Veterans Against the War that I found a place that would help vets recuperate and continue their lives after the military. Uh, I found a place that was very close to the school that I wanted to go to and I was again surprised that the VA system wasn't going to help me even at this time of need and I was uh, I was also reluctant to go back to the system but I was encouraged that I should because if I don't go back to the system then they'll never know and that I'll be another casualty of the system so I did go back and unfortunately I'm back at square one again they still want me to fill out more paperwork they want me to do appointments again and they want me to start from square one. Um, my argument to them is that my service record book, my medical record books, they all show that I have service, I have a medical injury, and that they need to somehow respond much faster than they've been doing in the past two years. It's been since 2005 that I got out. Um, they're requesting that I fill more paperwork, so that's where I stand to this day.